going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, April 29th, and it is a gorgeous afternoon here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you an easy, cheap overhead trellis design that you can fit almost anywhere and in any backyard garden. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. This year, I'm growing my tomatoes, zucchini, and cucumber plants in a straw bale garden. And all of these vegetables will require vertical support. They need some type of trellis. Now the problem is these straw bales are already elevated about two feet off the ground. So these T posts alone that are six and a half feet tall aren't nearly tall enough in order to support them throughout the season. They will outgrow them in a matter of a few weeks. And I needed a mobile portable solution that will give me extra height for trellising that wouldn't break the bank. For the frame of the trellis itself, you will need two different parts. You will need T posts and you will need eight foot long two by twos, which have a nominal size of inch and a half by inch and a half by eight feet. I purchased these six and a half foot T posts from Tractor Supply and I purchased these these eight foot two by twos from Lowe's. You can get the lumber or the T-post from pretty much any big box store, that's up to you. You can probably get away with shorter T-posts if you so desire, but I wanted the taller ones for more support. You will need one eight foot long two by two for every T-post that you use. How many you will need total is going to depend on how long your trellis needs to be. I recommend spacing the T-posts about every six to eight feet. Then for trellising hardware, we are going to need eighth inch stainless steel aircraft cable, eye bolts, zip ties, some aluminum collars in order to crimp the airplane cable, turnbuckles, and we're going to need several double tomato hooks and tomato clips so we can actually support our vining plants. To make it easy so you can find all of the supporting hardware, I will link to all of them in my Amazon storefront down in the video description underneath the trellising supplies list. And I will also place direct links to the trellising items in the video description for your convenience as well. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pre-drill the tops of all of our wood posts about two and a half inches from the top. Pre-drilling and making sure that the drill hole is not all the way up at the top will help prevent splitting. Then after we pre-drill all of the holes, we will install the eye bolts into the tops of the posts. Now that all of our two by twos have been drilled and the eye bolts have been installed, what we're going to do is we are going to attach them to the T posts. And the T posts are going to be the rigid supports that hold the two by twos in place. So what we're going to do is we are going to place the two by twos on the back side of the T post where this groove is. And that is going to act like, it's almost like it was built perfectly to hold a two by two. It's going to hold it nice and straight and in place. Then we are going to take zip ties to simply hold them in place and I'm going to use 12 inch zip ties to hold them in place. They are the perfect size to hold a two by two and strap it to a standard T post. So I'm simply going to place one of these up top and pull it nice and tight to secure them. Then I'm going to place another one at the bottom and pull that one nice and tight as well to secure the bottom. And then we are going to place one zip tie right in the middle for additional support. And what's very nice about this is these zip ties will hold this wood in place all season long or longer if you choose to leave this up for multiple seasons. But at the end of the year, if you want to disassemble this trellis, all you have to do is cut the zip ties and the wood will pop right off. Okay, now all of the wooden two by twos have been secured to the T post. However, I want you to notice that I oriented them differently. The end posts have the uh, eye bolt facing forward parallel to the trellis and then the supports in the middle they have the eye bolt sticking out perpendicular to the trellis and that's because they are going to hold the cable in place whereas the end supports are going to hold the turnbuckle in place so it's important that you orient these in the proper direction in order to hold the cable now i'm going to show you how to run the cable now we're going to begin attaching our airplane cable and the first thing we need to do is we need to place a loop on the end of the airplane cable and we're going to use one of these aluminum sleeves to do that so we're going to feed the cable through one end loop it back around and what this loop is going to do is it is going to attach to our turnbuckle that we're going to tighten to increase the tension in the lines so now that that is the right size i'm going to take a pair of bolt cutters and simply press the sleeve on to secure it permanently 
Now that the airplane cable has been attached to the end post with a turnbuckle, we are going to run the airplane cable to the end of our trellis plus another one to two feet so we ensure that our airplane cable has a little bit of additional slack so we can form a loop to secure it to the front post. Once we cut our airplane cable, we're then going to run it to the back of the trellis and run it through all of the eye bolts to keep it suspended into the air. Now I have the turnbuckle installed on the other end post and I already pulled my airplane cable through and I created a loop just like I did on the other side and now I'm going to press on this aluminum sleeve to hold it in place. So what I did was I manually hand tightened the overhead trellis to try and pull as much of the slack out as possible. Then I'm going to use the torque of the turnbuckle to pull out the additional slack that I couldn't pull out by hand. And now that the cable has been tightened, I'm going to cut off the excess. Now one thing that you will notice is I made sure to install the turnbuckle in the fully extended position. And that is because we need to manually pull the slack out of the cable using the torque of the turnbuckle. And that's what I just did. And I pulled it to the point where this is about hand tight. And I made sure to install a turnbuckle on both sides because I'm using pressure treated two by twos in order to hold this cable in place. And unfortunately, pressure treated wood tends to warp in the direction of the tension. So I fully expect both end supports to warp in an inch or two. And I will probably need to come back to both turnbuckles to pull the extra slack out. If you're going to use pressure treated wood, this is an unfortunate reality. If you use untreated wood, it probably won't warp as badly, but my Lowe's did not have any untreated wood. It's just very important that you don't pull things too tightly because remember, these are only being held in place by the T-posts and too much torque will actually pull your trellis over. So we're only making sure this is tough enough to hold the tomatoes and cucumbers and squash that are down below. We don't need this to be incredibly structurally sound. Well, I started populating the trellis I started hanging the double tomato hooks up top and then I started clipping them to my plants and I got the first few plants done and overall I think it's looking really good now I'm going to show you how to attach them in the same fashion now I'm going to show you how to trellis your vining vegetables and I'm going to use this tomato plant as an example. So I have my double tomato hook that's mounted on the cable trellis directly above me. I'm going to then take one of these tomato clips that you see right here and I'm going to attach it onto this string so it meets somewhere in the middle of the tomato plant and I want to get it to the point where I can clip it right underneath one of the nodes, which is where one of the leaves sit, so it holds it into place. Then I'm going to take the plant and twist it around uh, the string just a little bit to help coax it to grow up in that direction. And roughly every maybe foot or so, maybe a little bit more, I may have to add another one of these tomato clips to clip another piece of the main stem to the twine. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with a cucumber plant. Trellising a cucumber plant is going to be very similar to that of a tomato plant. We're going to follow the same procedure. We're going to take one of our tomato clips and we are going to attach it roughly to where the base of the cucumber plant is going to be underneath one of the nodes. Then once we have it attached underneath one of the nodes, we are going to gently wrap it around the cucumber plant to help encourage it to grab on and kind of twist its way up the uh, individual cable or the individual twine. And then every 12 to 18 inches or so, we can place another tomato clip that will hold the vine close to the string. And right here is the final product. We start with the zucchini. We move on to the tomato plants and I have numerous different varieties right here. They have all been supported using the string trellis and overall they're looking great. The smaller ones aren't quite ready to be string trellis yet. So I'll probably have to redo little guys like that right there once they toughen up a little bit. Then I have an eggplant and then I have all of my cucumbers over here. So overall, I think the product came out uh, really nicely. This was really cheap to build and the whole thing can be built only in about two hours or so. Now that being said, if I had to redo this entire trellis, I would change one thing and that is I would make the eye bolts probably about six inches lower. I made them just a little bit too high and I can't quite reach 
the top cable very easily for trellising. So with the double tomato hooks on my, uh, my tiptoes, I can just barely clip them on. If I were to lower it by say about four to six inches, it would have been no problem. So keep that in mind. I'll probably wind up using this same trellis in some form next year. So I'll either lower the eye bolts, maybe three to six inches, or I'll cut just a little bit off the bottoms of the boards to make things more reachable. So keep your reach in mind when you build a trellis like this a little bit better than I did. And that right there is one of the easiest, cheapest, and fastest tall trellises that you can build in your backyard that can fit in just about any garden for growing any kind of vining crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, and the like. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I used in my garden in general, they are all linked down below on my Amazon storefront in the video description, and I put some direct links in the video description as well for some of those trellising supplies. While you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. So I was asking Dale, because he's always out and about inspecting everything, and I asked him, and he won't answer. I say, Dale, who inspects the inspector? Do you know who inspects the inspector? Dale. No, he is the inspector. So I say, I say, Dale, what do I do if the inspector's corrupt? What do I do? What do we do if the inspector's corrupt? I see him taking bribes all the time. He does not. He takes bribes and then he does whatever the people that bribe him tell him to do. All the time. I think the inspector might be corrupt. I don't know if we can trust him. I mean, he'll do anything for a cookie. He will. He'll do anything for anything he can eat. I think the inspector is corrupt. Look at him, he's not even paying attention. He's already out looking for his next mark.